All right, so welcome back to Decrypted Tech's uh, continuing coverage of Windows 8, the customer preview program, and also uh, what you can expect out of it, not only from a desktop side, uh, but also from, uh, again, the tablet side. We have some additional, uh, some more things we're going to bring out about our uh, ASUS EE slate, and we'll be taking a look at that in another video. But for right now, we want to continue our gaming coverage. We're going to look at what, how this, uh, the new operating system performs when you're running it on an NVIDIA GPU. We've already shown you how well the AMD GPU worked with their new driver program, and we're running uh, a uh, NVIDIA's new drivers here, which we downloaded a little bit earlier and installed it. Again, we ran through some of the same things. You're still seeing the same problems that we had with uh, uh, the Darkness 2 is not going to run, Bioshock 2, of course, nothing's going to change just because we switched out our GPUs there. But we do want to go ahead and get into some gaming. Uh, we know that we can launch pretty much any of these from the desktop. So we're going to go ahead and kick on... Uh, Fraps, get it going, and we'll get started here. We just turned on our Tech On Model 55 tube amplifier, so we'll have some audio here. Should be the same quality audio, although we do want to see exactly what happens once we get these different ones going. So we know that NVIDIA and AMD have a little bit different CPU demand on them when they run. So go ahead, here's Modern Warfare 3. Same uh, game that we were looking at before. We'll go ahead and resume it pretty much from the same spot. So we gotta wait for it to load. Alright, and there we go. Stay on him, stay on him! Toss, got him in a bunch of bird! So you can see our frame rate's very good. Then okay, we'll go ahead and turn this down. Kind of getting beaten up this time. You can see our frame rates are still in the mid 40s, which is about where we would expect this game to be, even though it's a DirectX 9 game. Still about what we see when we're running it on Windows 7. So you still can see some of that tearing. We don't have uh, VSync set up. You can see it's very smooth gameplay here. So we'll go ahead and kick out of that one, and we'll move on to our next game. One of the things we are able to do this time, which we were not able to do uh, during our previous gaming experience, is that we did uh, create some save points for Far Cry as well as Skyrim. So we're going to go ahead and get those going, and we'll show you how the gameplay works on the NVIDIA GPU here as well. We've already shown you the frame rates on AMD, but we'll just give you a, a good visual representation of, a representation of how it actually runs. So. Okay, we're into the system, so we're going to go ahead and resume from pretty, should be the same point that we were at with AMD. Although we did do a little bit more playing today, so it might actually put us a little bit further. If so, we'll just kick back to one of the uh, earlier saves, and we'll move on from there. Oh, which it did, so we'll go ahead and uh, quit this, and we'll load game. Let's see, campaign... Load. This should be where we need to be. So we'll go ahead and get this running, and this will be the exact same one where you have the uh, parapet and you have the grenades and all of that. So give it just a second to load up. And there we are. You can see now we're getting uh, 51, 52 frames per second, which is not surprising considering that this is a. Uh, NVIDIA based game.
and you can see with uh, you know we have good gameplay here. In response to what uh, a couple of you have commented, yep, we do use the uh, targeting assist here. Just makes it a little bit easier for me to, to get through the game while I'm showing it off. The game's pretty fluid. Yeah, we have no problems here. So we'll go ahead and back out of this. And we'll move on to our next, uh, next game in line. This one's Far Cry. It's one that we weren't able to show off before, uh, simply because of the annoyingly long intro that there's no way to skip. Uh, you know, thank you... Uh, Ubisoft for that, but uh, you know that's a another conversation we'll have. Just the annoyingly long uh, intros that we see on a lot of games that there's just no way to bypass. We showed some of that off yesterday, including Skyrim. Uh, even Medal of Honor has one of the longest intros I've ever seen, and just is not what you wanted again, especially not if you're trying to benchmark. So we'll go ahead and get into story mode, and we'll load a game, which is going to be should be this one right here. So this one puts us right back at the beginning. And one of the things you'll notice is that we have no frame rate indication at the top. This is simply because the game is not displaying it. It's not that it's not there. It's that it's just not displayed. Uh, we were able to capture the frame rates properly with, uh, with Fraps 3.4.7, which was kind of nice. And uh, so we still have all that information for you. This will be able to give you a good uh, indication of how well it plays, just a visual indication here. You can see we have good, good gameplay, good audio. The Dolby that's on the UD, uh, X79 UD3 is pretty good, so and it works well with our tube amplifier. So all right, yeah, it passes through that, and now we'll go ahead and we'll head on into our next game, which is Skyrim. This one again, we managed to bypass a lot of what we had going on before. By the way, just think, since we haven't mentioned this, all of these games are at 1920 by 1080. We've maxed out all of the settings on them. Ultra high quality for Far Cry. Uh, maximum settings for Medal of Honor, Crisis 2, as well as Modern Warfare 3. So, each one of these is, has got that, um, got its max settings. So we'll start off here with Skyrim Inside the Keep, which is after you, uh, you know, narrowly avoid getting your head cut off. You can see this one's pretty good. We're actually up at 60 frames per second, which is nice and gives it a nice uh, smooth gameplay. So I have to come over here and get my hands on time. So of course, we want to take everything we can. another sword just because. And quickly we'll go ahead and inventory or equip everything. Yep. There we go. And uh, since most of what we're going through right now is pretty simplistic, it's actually just getting you to understand how to use the game. We'll wait until we actually get into some combat before we get out of this one. It won't take too terribly long before you run into your first fight. In fact, it's just around the corner. For those of you who played Skyrim, you'll know this. Um, as you can see, again, it's a good graphical response. We haven't run into any major issues with this game on Windows 8, which is unusual. Uh, with Windows 7, when we first started seeing that, at this stage we had some problems with games. Windows XP was... Uh, even worse, and Windows 98 to Windows 2000 was probably one of the worst ones that I ran into. Oh. And there, everybody's dead. So, and you can see the graphics is good and the game plays pretty good as well. So we'll go ahead and get out of here. And we'll move into our uh, last game. Which is going to be Medal of Honor. 
So we'll go ahead and start that one. And once again, we have a nice save game here, so we won't have to uh, suffer through that very long intro. We do have to suffer through all the advertisements telling you exactly who did the game. So, bear with us here for just a few seconds. Now, one thing I do want to talk about real quick is, uh, uh, it's actually not going to let me get into that, so we'll just go ahead and continue the game from here. One of the things we've talked about before that we haven't really covered yet is audio. Um, audio is going to be an important thing that you'll see starting to come out in games. Graphically, they kind of hit a wall, although there are some nice things that they can do with shading and all of that. One of the things that they can't do yet is they can't break beyond that. There's still a limit to the number of triangles that you can draw and redraw. I know NVIDIA is talking about Kepler being the equivalent of three of their GTX 580s. It'll be nice if that's actually the case, but you still have to wait for game designers to develop engines that are actually going to handle that. Whereas the next step in this is going to be expanding the audio capabilities, going to add a new level of immersion, which we've talked about before. And that's one of the things we're seeing with some of these onboard audio cards. Although, in the end, you're still going to get the best audio quality from getting an add-in, just as you would uh, an integrated graphics processor versus an add-in graphics processor. So again, if you want to take a listen and, and hear what we're seeing, or see what we're seeing. One of the locations is Nokia Say again, Nokia Reek. Although you're in luck, Langley has predatory imagery. If you notice there, as he's talking, the closer I get to him, I can actually hear his voice over top of the radio that's supposed to be in my ear. This is one of the nice things that we're going to be seeing from yeah, yeah. game developers, is we'll see them add in these, video, or these audio clue, cues to make the game a little bit more immersive and to get you into the game. Like uh, You didn't hear it because I was talking, but when at the explosion, when it pops off, you can actually feel it as a presence instead of just hearing it through your headphones. So that's going to be nice to see that, and as we see games develop, it's got nothing to do with Windows 8, but it's just the next thing that we should be, begin to see in our games is, is more immersive audio, positional audio, better audio techniques, as well as better audio equipment to go with this. We'll see the, the addition of software to improve onboard audio. Of course, there's going to be a limit to that, but we should see that as far as just basic gaming stuff. All right, so that wraps up the five games that we're able to get working on uh, Windows 8 at this point. We will continue and we'll try and compile a list. If you have any information on games that you know that do work or do not work with Windows 8, whether it's on an NVIDIA card or an AMD GPU, then let us know. Definitely send a, and you know use the contact form on our website and send us that information. We'll start compiling a list on our forum. So if people are interested in knowing what games are working now in Windows 8, they can go ahead and look forward to that and we can move forward you know, and help in, in that. As always, if you like this video, go ahead and click on the like. If you want to share it with your friends, go ahead and share it on Facebook, Twitter, wherever. And subscribe if you want to continue to keep up with the information that we're providing on this. All right, well, thank you. And that wraps up our NVIDIA side of taking a quick look at gaming under Windows 8.